Carol Pohl. I'm from the Social Science Department. As part of the 50th anniversary uh, celebration, we're doing oral histories of key people at FIT. And that's what this is going to be. It's being done today, February 21st, in room B403 at FIT. And I'd like to turn it over now to our key person who will introduce himself and tell us a little about himself. Hi. Uh, my name is Saul Smilowitz. I was a graduate of FIT in 1953 when we were in two rooms on the eighth floor at the Needle Trades High School on 24th Street. And consequently, I am now the chairman of the Manufacturing Management Department in the new buildings on 27th Street. And uh, I have a little bit of a unique background in that after I graduated FIT I went into the service came out of the service and I actually worked around the country in different and various jobs I came back to FIT in 1965 September of 1965 as an instructor in what we had called the Manu manufacturing Management Engineering Department. It was not called Manufacturing Management at that time. And I was here as an instructor and an assistant professor for eight and a half years, and then unfortunately I had to leave because of economic problems. And I was away for 15 years, and I returned in September of 89 and came back as an assistant professor and consequently have now become the chairman of this department. A couple of interesting things have happened in the 15 years. One is I have seen quite a difference in the student body. When we were going to school, it was jacket ties and white shirts. Of course, the, the dress code now is entirely different. We don't require jackets, ties, and white shirts. However, the face of the student body has changed considerably. We did not have any females in our department when I was both a student and when we were teaching before. Now I would say we're 90% female, 10% male. Uh, the ethnic background is entirely different, completely different. Uh, most of us had come from industry before. Our parents were either in, the, in this, in this industry, our relatives were in the industry, or the company sponsored us to come to school. This is not the situation today. Uh, I think the opportunities are much greater today than they were when we were students and when I was teaching before. Uh, in this department, we have untold number of students going out on many interviews, which is telling us that there are many jobs out there for every student. And we have all kinds of statistics to back this up. We're probably one of the smallest departments in the college, and yet our people go out and are, are earning the highest amounts of, of money. And again, we have all kinds of st statistics to back this up. Our problem, very simply stated, is we cannot find enough people to come into this industry at the middle management level and to be trained as middle managers there's some kind of a stigma at this end of the business and we can't figure out what this is and how to break this down. We have an industry advisory group. We have people from uh, other, other areas advising us, telling us what we should be doing, what courses and curriculums we should be teaching, but it's still a recruitment problem that the college must recognize and must back us up. We are not recruiters. We cannot go out professionally and recruit. That's not our job and we don't know how to do it. However, uh, 
the industry is crying for our people, and I think the the answer to this is that we have nine colleges now teaching basically what we teach when we were the only ones teaching. And the competition is extremely great. There are four colleges that have the same kind of program that we have. And the AAMA, the American Apparel Manufacturers Association, happens to be meeting here tomorrow for three days, evaluating us in terms of our curriculum, our program, uh, our statistics, our success statistics, and of course our failure statistics, whatever they may be. Did you say the name of the organization? The Apparel, American Apparel Manufacturers Association. This is the premier organization that oversees the apparel manufacturing industry, both in the terms of suppliers, manufacturers, people performing services, research, and on and on. And they happen to call their annual meeting here tomorrow for three days. And uh, not only are they evaluating our program, but we're trying to figure out what the whole country needs in terms of curriculum program to keep the apparel industry here. Here meaning New York City? New York City, no. Here meaning? USA. USA. Uh, the manufacturing aspect of this industry is not here anymore. It's worldwide. It's global. It's, it's in this country, it's Southeast. It's Caribbean Basin. It's Pacific Rim. And of course now it's Mexico with NAFTA. So the apparel industry is not just a New York based industry. We do have all the executives here the buying uh, the decision making here, but we have a tremendous amount of liaison done from New York worldwide. And we are training people not only uh, for this type of work and product development work, but we're, the, the thrust is not factory as it was 25 years ago. It's, it's more of product development, costing, merchandising, and working with other departments, uh, accessing equipment, products, packaging. It's an entirely new face of this industry. And I think that's the message that has to get across to the people that we want to recruit. It's not a factory-oriented program anymore, as it was when I was in school. And where I was in so-called trenches in the factory to start, and then worked my way back into merchandising, into product development. In fact, I owned my own company at one time, so I was doing everything in the company from designing, purchasing, manufacturing, selling, hiring salesmen, and doing all of these uh, different jobs and all the, all the functions. But this is not what we're training for anymore. Could you explain a typical kind of a graduate of the program and what they do, for instance? Okay. We are not just training people for clothing. We're talking sewn products. Say it again? Sewn products. We have people going into the toy industry. We have people going into luggage. We, have, we even have people here in the flag business. Boat covers, seat covers, anything that has to do with what we would consider sewn or related products. So it's not just clothing anymore. Uh, we used to think of it in terms of needle trades where we are, we are also talking about systems, automated systems, automated cutting, automated sewing. We're training people for this. We're not training technicians. We're training people so that they're comfortable when they go into a company and they see this kind of equipment. They understand what it is. They understand its capabilities. They understand what it can do. And uh, Everything today is cost. They must understand what costing means to this industry. Costing out products, costing out equipment, purchasing, etc. 
right down the line. The days of holding up a garment and saying, I think it costs this much are over. And we're also talking mass merchandising, mass producing. We're talking the Walmarts, the Kmarts, the large outlets. That's what's happening in the industry today. Not the couture, not the mom and pop little shop with the central buying office. Those days are over. We're talking mass manufacturing, mass merchandising, large quantities of goods, scheduling, quick response, computers, EDI. What's EDI? Electronic data interchange. Which means what? Well, we, ha we have companies that are set up from point of sale in the retail store and in direct communication with the manufacturer. So the manufacturer knows as soon as something is sold, either he gets some kind of a report immediately to either reorder, remake, or gang up orders and then, then, then ship. But the communications has changed completely in terms of gathering information, sending out letters, even faxes at this time. So we're, we're online with point of sale back into manufacturing. And we're teaching this through our, uh, our labs in the school are teaching this with quick response. Of course, this is a great buzzword today, but in real world terms, this is the, the movement of our industry today. It is not the old cut and sewn industry where we make a garment, show it, make duplicates, run back, make orders, buy fabric. Those days are over. This is all planning, pre-planning, and everyone is, is, is thinking in terms of time. How fast can we get goods out to the customer? How fast can we make it? How fast can we access equipment, materials, raw materials, packaged goods? It's an entirely different aspect today as opposed to when I went to school or even when I started teaching in 1965. It's a completely different face of the industry. The students are different. They have to understand this. And I don't know what else I can tell you. Well, is it an associate's program and a bachelor's program? Yeah, we program? offer two programs, and we're, we're working on a, a third one now. Originally, we started out with an associate's program. And people went out with an associate's degree and they could make a, a very good living. Times have changed. Now most of our companies are asking for a bachelor's. A bachelor's degree. It's almost a prerequisite. I'm saying almost because there's still some companies that will still accept it as, as in, a, in an associate degree because of time. They need someone right away. And they'll sponsor them to come back, pick up courses, and get a bachelor's degree. We also have an upper division. And the upper division is basically fed by other lower divisions in the college, namely fashion merchandising and buying, pattern making, uh, design. And if, if someone is coming over from a lower division, they have a two-edged sword. They have their basic information from their lower division, design, pattern making or, or FBM, and then they can go into what we call uh, production management apparel. And when we talk apparel, we're also talking related industries. So they can come out with not only the design aspect, the merchandising aspect, or the pattern making aspect, but they can come out with the production aspect. So they become a very, very valuable tool to the company because they have both aspects, they can, they can fall back on their original design creativity and then know how to put this product together and cost it. So they come out so-called double edge. Now, third area, we are working on a straight through four year program, which has not been approved. It's still in the talking stage. Our, our industry advisory board is looking at it now in two weeks, we will have an answer from them whether this thing is all meaningful. We will see if, if they have any suggestions because these are the people out there that are going to be hiring our people. And these are the people that are going to come back to us and say, make adjustments. 
Now, we know there's a need for this because we know that some of our students are asking for four years of, of intense work. So we, we are now at the point of showing it to, it's already drawn up, showing it to the industry advisory board. The department has voted on it. The department believes we have fine-tuned it. We don't know yet. We're going to get this information from outside, and then, of course, we have to find out is there really a need in industry for this type of program. We feel there is, because the competition in the other colleges are offering four-year programs. What other colleges are we competing with? Okay. The four colleges that have an accepted program by the AAMA are George Brown in Canada, Philadelphia Textile, North Carolina State, um, let's see, the North Carolina State of Clemson, and us, and us. There are five other colleges who are chomping at the bit, who already have programs in, but are not as intense as we are, as the four of us are. They have some kind of apparel manufacturing or apparel manufacturing appreciation courses in their design areas, and in some cases the home economics areas, uh, in their merchandising areas, but they don't have a, a, an intense program as the four of us do that is specifically set up to train people to go out and earn a living at this end of the business. Now, of course, that can change. Uh, there's, I believe, East Louisiana. I don't know if I have the name right. I'm not sure if it is any, Clemson. Any place in New York, New York metropolitan No. Area? No. Anything that's in New York is strictly designed. Uh, Iowa has... Strictly designed? Designed. Like uh, uh, Parsons does not offer this. Pratt does not offer this. Trying to think who else has it. There's a school in Los Angeles that has has a, has this. Uh, well, part of that is curious is the role of since it's New York City is seen has always been seen as a manufacturing center until right. recently. What the role of New York City being FIT being located in New York City, how FIT has affected the city and in turn metropolitan area and such. Okay, when the college was originally set up, there were two departments. There was design and manufacturing management or engineering. Those, those were the two main departments. As time went by, merchandising was added, some other design areas were added, and some of our manufacturing was changed a little. It was It went from the factory type training, factory management, Type, junior engineer, industrial engineer, assistant plant manager, those levels. And it has gone into product development, uh, a tremendous amount of costing and production control computers. This department teaches the computers to many other departments in the college. Uh, and on and on. We've, we've, we've splintered off to other, other areas. The industry is telling us now that it's not factory-oriented, it's liaison-oriented. In other words, policy-making, costing, merchandising, with a backup of, of knowledge in manufacturing vis-a-vis -vis costing, it, it must be related, costing must come into it. By costing, you mean? So. Beyond that. In other words, pre-costing before we even sell a product. In other words, figuring out what the cost will be, turning it over to management uh, and, ma and merchandising, let them make a decision. What are we going to sell it for? Then go back to us and say, make it. So they have to come up with some kind of decision. We can only act as a service. We can tell them what we believe it's going to cost the manufacturer. Then at the other time, if they say yes, make it, 
we now have to find the areas where it can be made, sourcing. We have to go out and find the factories. We're not going to buy the fabric that's someone else's function, but we have to know how to make it, how to bring in the, co the product at the right cost, time-wise in terms of production control, communications in terms of uh, quick response. In other words, if they need fill-ins, they need a fill-in order or something like that. We have to be able to handle that. Uh, we have to be able to set up a factory, advise a factory, specifications. We handle all the technical end of the business. Okay, and when you say we, this is what our graduates will be trained And you to say do. middle management, that's what they're right, doing. Right, right. And now, who do they work for? Okay. I would say if you, if you are looking for an example of where our management students can go to. Take a look at Liz Claiborne. Everyone in their production department, from the top person down, is a graduate of this department. Of FIT. Of FIT. But this department. Yeah. Now, uh, as an example, their VP of manufacturing, uh, all of their sourcing people, all their costing people, all their pattern people, Anyone in any executive capacity in production has graduated from FIT from our department. Now that's one company, but we're in every company. Can you name some other companies? Well, we're in Ancline. Uh, we were in both the major luggage companies, Samsonite. Uh, Tourista, American Tourista, we had people there. The original clothing people at Nike were graduates of this department. White Stag. So if you're talking all the major manufacturers, we can find our graduates there. And where do we find these fellas we, when we, and girls? When we go to the Bobbin Show in Atlanta in September, which is the, the premier show of this industry. We have a booth. We have an education booth. And this particular year, we had two booths. It's, it's like a homing pigeon coming back. They all come back to check in, so to speak. We also have an active alumni association where people are, are coming back to us. We update information. Tremendous networking system with this department. We have a networking fu uh, uh, function every spring where we bring in graduates to meet our new graduates going out because of the networking. We probably place more people through this, this function than the placement office. And we're finding the internship department is placing people for us because whoever's going in the intern program, internship program, winds up getting a permanent offer. I think it's about 40% now. Our graduates have no problem finding jobs. Could you mention, uh, you talked about the issue of recruiting and who are the students that are coming in and how it's changed. Ethnically, you said there's a change. Right. And if, women if, have changed. If we, have, if we go back, we find that who, who were the graduates before, let's say 25, 30 years ago? You have people, or you had people who came from the industry, parents owned factories, companies, companies sponsored, and that's how some of our comp competing comp uh, colleges are working. The ones down south certainly are working this way. They're, they're sponsoring students, sending them to the colleges, and then asking them to come back for two or three years to work, sort of to pay off the college experience. That background, first and second generation, Italians, Jews, uh, Portuguese, Spanish, first and second generation. We don't see this today. We have a different, completely different ethnic background. We have an awful lot of Orientals. We have foreign students. In this semester's class, we have two students from the Arab Emirates. 
We have two students from Israel. We have two students from India. They all have college degrees. They all have a certain linkage to the industry, somehow. Some might not be direct, some might be in textile, some might be in merchandising, but the, the normal linkage that we think of is textiles, manufacturing, merchandising. They are somewhere in the three. And the chances are they do not have the technical background in manufacturing. They might come out of management in, in that area. And they're here to study and go back to their home countries. Right. They're not looking for jobs anywhere else. They're going right back to the company that sent them here, whether it be family or sponsor or whatever. Now, who do we have recruited here in this country? Basically, high school students, uh, Oriental background. Do you know what countries? Japan. Korea, Korea, Japan, and China. Usually, first and second generation. We find an awful lot of people who are new immigrants in our programs, both day and night. Uh, that's the Oriental group. We have a lot of Russians, first, first generation. These from these are people who not worked in the industry. They've some so connection. They there, there is some connection. Yes. We have to probe, but we find out that there is some connection. Uh, a lot of South Americans, a lot of Mexicans, South Americans, first and second generation. Any specific countries? Uh, not particularly. Uh, I can I can name one at night. Who's, who's here, he happens to be 50 years old with four, stu four children in college. He needs the credential. He comes from Peru. But he has worked in Panama for many years. He has no credentials, he can't get a job. So he's here to get the technical training and the credential. That's what he needs. But it's an entirely different face than it was 25 years ago. Now, qualifications. We run into a problem. We find that educationally, if they do not come from a college or have some kind of degree before they get here, we run into a problem. But so is every other college. We run into remedial math, remedial English. Even our upper, the upper division students coming from other lower division, and they have the same problem we find that we have a problem. We are an intense course and a lot of mathematics, both practical and also structured. Uh, yes, uh, Aaron Shores program, Quick Response Connected is part of this uh, department. Yes, it's, it's highly integrated. We use the facilities downstairs in all of our courses, in the production control course, in the time study course, in the cutting and costing course, in the basic and advanced sewing classes. We use his area downstairs, the AAMTD lab and the quick response lab. Could you explain the, you gave it an acronym, the A. could you explain the Okay, phase? the AAMTD lab is the uh, Advanced Apparel Manufacturing t uh, Display. It, it's the uh, it's it's a demonstration lab. It was originally set up as a demonstration lab. It's more hands-on now than it ever was. Through the quick response area, and also the, the cutting, the sewing, and the automatic Gerber uh, it's, uh, equipment down there. We use it. We use it not only as demonstration, but we use it for projects, where students have to go in and actually hands-on do something. And the mathematical skills are needed, I guess, in developing these, the computer skills as well. And the costing skills. That's where, that's where we find a weakness. As soon as we get into a costing program, we find a weakness. And it's not an arithmetic weakness, it's a conceptual problem a problem-solving problem. 
And if you think about the backgrounds of the students, are they mostly from working class backgrounds? I would say so. First generation college in their families mostly? Mostly, right, right. A lot of continuing ed students who have transferred over have come over also and become full-time students. Take a few courses and then swing over. Also, we take in students uh, off the beaten track at the, the normal September. We don't do that. We'll take them in, let them take remedial classes, let them take, uh, if need be, let them take bridge classes. Let, let them get prepared. Classes? Yeah, and anyone coming over to us from an, a lower division must have at least four bridge classes, must have a basic accounting class, must have a basic marketing class, must have a basic computer class, and must have a, a basic textile class. Now, if they come from the three areas that I mentioned, design, uh, fashion merchandising, and buying, and uh, pattern making, they will have had two or three of those, but we require the four so that they can come in and be on stream with everyone else. This way they're not behind. So what we will do is let someone come in perhaps in February semester, make up whatever deficiencies they have, take a liberal art or whatever need be to, to pull in the 12 credits, and then swing over as a full-time student in the following semester which is the spring, this the uh, September term, and they're on track. Now, you mentioned also the original program was males. Was it only males? They only let men into the... Uh, no, no. It, it, those who applied. I, uh, I never had any exposure to any females in any of my classes when I was here. About, I would say, five years later, we started to see females in. Also from people in the industry, the right, families right, were in the industry. Right. And, and in terms of future directions, do you see anything that you'd like to touch upon in the uh, future plans? Well, we're more in computer integrated than we ever were, and we're probably going to be more integrated into it. In all our courses, we, we're introducing computer. In all of our courses. Uh, if it's not a demo, it's hands-on. In demoing, we're making it hands-on. We will demo it and then say, demo, now you do it. Demonstrating, setting up a model program. Then you do it. We're doing that more and more. We have increased our basic computer class we now require an advanced class, and so do the other upper divisions, and they're coming to us to supply the course, which is a man uh, management information system course. We're, we're giving this to the other upper division uh, curriculums. It, we're part of that as a service department. So we're doing that, and we're expanding it every semester. We have more and more sections of that. In our department, because we have gone outside to a, an industry advisory board, we're constantly looking at our program and saying to ourselves, are we, are we really teaching the right courses? And we're swinging the courses. We're, we're continuously changing content in the courses. We have introduced certain courses and dropped certain courses because of the needs outside. All of us do work outside, some kind of consulting. Uh, we're all on advisory boards to other people. So we're getting some pretty pretty good information, what they want, what they need. We come back with this. Equipment-wise, we all attend trade shows. We're, we have, I think, five people on the AAMA uh, boards in different committees. We're in the Education Committee. We're in the Technical Advisory Committee. We're in the uh, Quick Response Committee. Uh, we're Maybe in of the associations, you mean, is that? In the, in the major associations. So we're, we're getting information firsthand. As soon as something is happening, we know about it. If we're not there personally, we know about it anyway. We attend the seminars. And 
they're here tomorrow. So we have some very interesting information going back and forth. We get it firsthand. And then, of course, FIT, just its name commands a certain amount of respect in the industry, and people come to us first. They come to us, do we have students? What do we think of certain things? Can you do certain things for us? Can we run seminars? Can we come back with consulting? Can we do things for them, for the industry itself? So FIT alone, just its name, is very prestigious in the industry. More so than all the other schools. The other schools tend to have a specialty for different industries. North Carolina State is very strong in the textile end of the business. However, they do have a program because there's a need for it down there. Southern Tech was basically an offshoot of FIT, which we helped them set up their program. We told them what equipment to buy, what curriculums to, to, to teach, and they became a competitor. But they are Southern based, and they're, they're Southern sponsored, and they're not really a threat to us in terms of, of what we're doing. It just there. sounds like more global, you know, the more Right. We seem, we seem to be in the more global areas. Our people are, are going worldwide. Their people are basically coming from the southern industry, going back to southern industry. But that's their need, and that's, that's fine with us. Uh, there's a whole group out in the Midwest, Iowa and, and Wisconsin, have programs now. Because there's some industry out there. There's a need for some technical people out there. That's fine. Uh, there is there appears to be a, a stream of small business, small manufacturing, but sometimes they call them sweatshops, still going on in the New York metropolitan area. Does FIT relate to them? Do we get any of the people who come here? Well, That's the we don't want to think we do. But we know Chinatown is sending people up here either in the evening and continuing ed, mostly, maybe a trickle through the, the day program. We can't say that they're sweatshops, but yeah, we, no, do no. Know, we do know that, they, that they're probably not adhering to all the labor rules and, and uh, you know, the working conditions and things like that. And we can't judge it, that's none of our business. But we do know, per se, Patterson, 7th and 8th Avenue, that this is existing. We know it. We can't be naive enough to think it's not up there. We do know it's there. We don't condone it, obviously. But the information comes to us. One of our people on the st on the on the, uh, on the faculty is is directly involved through the GDIC, which is a government agency through New York, the Union, and New York City, and they're fighting it. They're, you know that he's he has made proposals to try to eliminate some of these shops. You know, what, what we can do to eliminate it. We don't send okay. students there to go to work. Yeah. We, don't, we don't recommend they go to work in a loft operation because we know what's happening. That's not our function. Yeah. On the other hand, it's also not our function to police it. Yeah. But we do make our students aware that this type of an industry will have this. They'll take advantage of the immigrants. They'll take advantage of, of off-clock Workers, we know that. We're not naive what to think. What means what? It's illegal. A lot of illegals working, Peace. not getting, not getting overtime, uh, working more hours than they're supposed to, and ages in the in the factories. You know, there's there's certain laws, there's certain codes that you can't work under a certain a, in a certain age. And, and what is under 18? You mean? I, yeah, they they can't work around mechanical devices. They can work in trimming areas and packaging and things like that, but when they start to get into sewing equipment and cutting equipment, you run into dangers. And then OSHA gets involved in all of these things. So we make our students aware of OSHA. We make them aware of the laws. We make them aware of the hot goods laws where the, your, your goods will be confiscated if they're ever found in, in these kinds of shops. We make them aware of that because if they ever get into a purchasing situation or they ever get into a situation where they're going to give out work, 
they should be aware of what's going on in the real world. And that is the real world. I think the Times just had a tremendous article in this two weeks ago. And uh, uh, ABC had an, uh, a pro whole program on this. So it's there. I mean, we can't look away from it. It's there. But we let our people know about it. It's real world situation. Uh, could you talk a little about also the uh, uh, about any changes you've seen, other changes that you'd, you'd like to, I know that you have another appointment at uh, four, if there's some things that you would like to make sure are included in the archives. You know, any key events or changes, directions? I think there has to be an ex uh, a, tremen a tremendous exer exertion on the part of the administration to go out and recruit people. Recruit students for the for, program? For the, week, for the week sister programs in the college. My program being one. I don't think they have to go out to, to recruit for design. I don't think they have to go out and recruit for fashion merchandise. But I think they have to go out and recruit for us and whoever else needs help. I think that's where the effort has to be. And, and the proof of this is the industry needs our people. There are jobs out there. And just because we don't get enough people to run sections, that does not justify dropping a department or, a, or a classes. I think the administration has to recognize this in terms of what's happening in the real world and their efforts and their priorities have to be towards these weak systems. And we are one. We know. And I repeat, we are not recruiters. We don't know how to recruit. We don't know what to say. It's, you know, they, there are professions out there, professionals, who should be doing this. But they don't have to do it for the strong sisters departments, the merchandising and the design. They're going to sell themselves. That's what the college was built on. They're going to sell themselves. We can't depend on the unions anymore to give us all the support. They have enough problems. Have the unions in the past? Uh, oh, yeah. Like the IGWU and... And the Amalgamated. They were sponsors of the original college. They saw the need for, for people out there. But they have their own problems now getting people for, the, for their own organizations. As a matter of fact, they're merging. They're merging. So they have their own problems. Do they provide students for you? No, but what they will do, and we work with them, they provide training programs for people. We let them use our facilities under this GDIC because that's a, a city, state, and union-sponsored program. Could you spell out GD? Uh, I mean, what it means, government? I really investing. don't know what the, the, the whole thing really means. It's a government? It's a government-sponsored program to train people to keep the apparel industry here in the city. So they will retrain people. Uh, they will take people with language problems and train them, and then hands-on training. And we run that. We run a program for them in the cutting area. We also run a, through the seminar department, a, a mechanics training program so that we can train mechanics. Uh, the high school, Fashion High School, one of our part-time is, is the director of a training program that trains a class of Spanish-speaking people, a class of Chinese-speaking people, and they alternate. And this goes on all year long. But we, we basically support them. And one of our part-timers is the director of that. You mentioned that the, the, the unions were uh, sponsors of the college. I mean, Way the back, they were. They were very, very important in, in the college. They recognize the need for management. And they also had scholarships. I think that's something else you should know about. The American Apparel Manufacturers Association just gave us $20,000, which I'm about to give out at 4 o'clock, 
to 19 students for a recruitment effort for students who will stay in the industry. In other words, come to school, show us a decent GPA, and stay in the industry. If they have any intentions of leaving, or we feel they're not going to stay, they're ineligible. What's the group that does it? The American Apparel Manufacturers Association. That's that premier company that will be here tomorrow. Okay. So we, we're going to give out checks in 15 minutes to 19 students. We also take the students to the trade shows. We take them down to Atlanta to the trade shows. We also take them on field trips. Not just to factories, but to suppliers and service people, consultants, equipment people. Because they're the future buyers of, of all these things later on. So they're getting some real hands-on experience. They're getting some real-world experience. We take them not only, as I say, to factories, because anybody can walk through a factory, but we take them to service bureaus. We take them to uh, equipment manufacturers so they can see what's going on, services. So they get, they get not just the, the classroom exposure, but the, what I call the real world exposure, which is very important. They have to see it. Now their parents never saw it. My father never saw it. And I'm second generation. You're, you're from a family that is in We owned our own factories. And what kind of, what did you manufacture? We manufactured tailored garments, children's tailored garments. But I can tell you that the experiences that they have today are entirely different than what I was exposed to. But this is much more valuable than what I saw. I, only, I saw a very narrow experience. Their world is wide open. Yeah. Wide open. I mean, when you were at FIT? FIT and working for the family. And, you know, all my exposure was very, very small. Oops. Yes, ma'am. I can't talk, take any calls anymore today. Thanks a lot. Okay, you're a busy man, so thank you very much. Okay.